welcome to the interesting podcast episode number 162. This episode is with my longtime friend and previous guest of the show, Danica Rockwood. We've known each other since before I even started this podcast, and it's crazy to see how life has changed so much for both of us. In this episode, we talk about her cosplay and streaming, how she chooses her characters, navigating how to be creative while also paying the bills, the ins and outs of Patreon and Twitch, her streaming setup, some real talk on how the different platforms work, how fast sudden really is, and so much more. You're in for a treat, guys, so buckle up, friends! Without further ado, please enjoy this episode of The Interesting Podcast, number 162, with Danica Rockwood. Theme song time. been just under five years since you were, since you were on this last a lot has happened in five years yes it has for you and me yeah oh. like different lives now it's wild and the landscape is so different like five years ago i rem- i i didn't listen to them because i don't listen to my own shows but i remember we like patreon was just starting to be a thing yeah i then. didn't have a patreon just yet at that time yeah and now it's like patreon's become this thing that's going on and people are having so many other avenues now it's a whole different landscape so many trains have popped up like vine has come and gone tiktok is now the thing youtube has morphed 20 times twitch is the new landscape that's like yeah. really where I'm things on are twitch happening now i'm a twitch partner <laughs> yeah Patreon for like almost five years oh I don't have an OnlyFans, though. I've managed to dodge that one. There you go. It's Not that I feel you. like above it or anything. <laughs> oh, no, it is trying to come. Yeah. I've been contacted <laughs> by many representatives being like, hey, we'll get you a deal. But like, what's crazy is since we were talking about how like, I would, I guess, old Patreon is considered. Mm-hmm. Um, It's not that old, though. But like, right. <laughs> it is. They They made this new thing once Patreon got so popular that they were going to bump up the percentage that they would take from creators to provide some sort of profit. But Patreon straight up told David and I, my photographer, David Love and I have Mm -hmm. Patreon together. Um, They said, Hey, uh, you guys have been with us for so long. You're going to have a legacy and we're only going to take like less than 8%. Uh, I think, I think the numbers, she's like four or 5%, which isn't that bad, but OnlyFans takes, I think like 10 Really? 15%. Like they take a higher percentage. Mm-hmm. And when the representatives have talked to me, I was like, hey, um, Patreon takes less, <laughs> like, less. <laughs> like, can you give me a better deal? And they're like, no. And I was like, well, then don't, then don't write me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I've had them writing me like four times before. And they're like, hey, we'll offer you a better deal. And then it was like when I considered making one for a millisecond. Uh, they take uh, they take a twenty percent oh. chunk without being contacted by a representative. Interesting. So it's like I need to go back to that rep, but then right. at the same time, it's like no, still to get a better deal on Patreon. Right, right. Is it has it become more work now that you've kind of like gotten into the groove of like Patreon and that sort of like creation? Um. I would like I've I've become so accustomed to doing Patreon that it's become second nature to me. Sure. The only thing has been the pandemic has oh, been yeah. really <clears throat> weird. Um, we basically I usually go out to David's. Well, I was going out to David's once a month mm-hmm. for about like four to five days, and we would just marathon shoot like left, right, and center. We would we would shoot like four looks in one day, and then wow. we would develop such a strong backlog that if anything is to happen, like if I'm to get sick, John, David's to get sick, his kid wants to visit him or something, mm-hmm. or if I'm, you know, getting second degree burns like I did. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah I remember we'll be this. Okay. 
<laughs> like basically I Tupac'd it where like if I die right now, yep. um, still receive new photos for the next four months from me. <laughs> They're all set. <laughs> and frankly, if I die right now, I would want you to see them. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's going to be really weird. Um, but yeah, that's, that's how we bit. were going. <laughs> and then unfortunately the, pan- well, fortunately and unfortunately the pandemic like burned our back backlog out because right. it was, it was so much going on during lockdown mm-hmm. that when I was, I was paying attention to China, at the very yep. beginning, like the December, uh, November area of the pandemic before we had even considered going on lockdown. Sure. <clears throat> um, before we even thought it would even come over here. Uh, we were like, yeah, um, they're they're They've been on lockdown for like two months and it's been getting weird. Like there's been like, you know, borderline, like you can't leave your house. Like you literally can't leave your house. Someone's there. Right. Like, making sure you can't. So I didn't even know if I could cross city lines or city limits. Um, sure to get to David's at times. So I just flat out was like, I'm not coming out. Um, I don't know what's going on, but if I do come out, we need to make the most of it. Uh, so it was, so, so I would say like you asking me that question of, has it been more work? Um, it's kind of hard because like my perspective, it has been skewed because of this last year being so sure difficult that it's like, Oh, I mean, yeah, but no, like, I, I don't know, like, um, once you get in the swing of it and it becomes your, your thing, like you don't really realize how much work you're putting into it. Like, it's just like, you know, I, I love what I do and I don't realize how much work it is because I enjoy it. Sure. That makes sense. That makes sense. Four in a day. That's like, how many hours are you shooting? We don't do that anymore though, but it Probably was Probably smart. We were. <laughs> we're like a bit of night owls. So like we start at like nine at night and then we like go into like six in the morning oh. um, or so, but like, then we just sleep all like day. And then during sure. that time, like the only time it really sucks is if we want to do an on location shoot, because then that's when it gets really stressful because you either do the golden hour in the morning or you do like the sunset hour at the very end of the day. So you only have two opportunities. So you need to time all your day planning into getting the right lighting and then you only get that good lighting for 30 minutes. And it's just like, oh, so, right. like, so it's like, uh, it's just this, when we have to do studio stuff, we can do it at whatever time we want. We could even fake it too. Like, cause David can put these big ass lights outside his window to shine into the house. Right. It's like, we fake it. It's cool. It's totally fine. You can do it at whatever time of day. I love it. I love it. How do you pick your characters these days? Um, so now the thing is in the last five years, since the last time we talked, now mm-hmm. the thing is, is to be the first one to do the trending thing. Sure. Um, or you have to be the first three people to get on the trending thing. And then outside of that, like it's, it's outdated. Like nobody cares anymore unless you're the first three. So right. there's been that whole, like do what's trending, but like, sometimes I'll do what's trending if it appeals to me. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I'll do, um, basically what I want because I can, and because I like it, (laughs) (laughs) um, like I fell on that resident evil boat pretty hard. And sure. I think that was like my last, I say that now, but watch it. (laughs) I think that's my last like moment where I'm going to cosplay something that I don't know the source material of, because I didn't particularly enjoy resident evil eight because of that. Okay, um, that that makes sense. Like when yeah. something is overhyped, some people are like, uh, you know, it makes me like it less. <laughs> yeah, it was one it was one of those, but I just I don't know. I just felt like the amount of time that I put into those outfits was the same amount of time that the devs have put into designing the characters. And <laughs> when I saw the game in its full like entirety, and then I saw like what happens to the characters, how quickly some of them are killed off, or how the devs had continuity errors with the outfits and the designs, I was like, this is sloppy and I'm not a fan. <laughs> and sure. it sure. just, it kind of just made me feel less interested in it. And yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I just, that's what I don't want to go for. So that's kind of why I'm like, I don't really want to, I don't really want to cosplay something I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And also it's a lot of work. <laughs> it's, um, it's something that's not talked about in the cosplay world. The toxic dangerous time crunches and deadlines people give themselves sure um you're familiar with con crunch oh yeah people 
don't sleep for 72 hours. They, mm -hmm. they work themselves raw. They, they sit at their desk sewing and then they like hunch their back all up their back and their whole body starts cramping up. They're not stretching. They're not getting water. They're not moving. They're not sleeping. Um, and they're, they're there doing this for like nothing. Um, and it's fine if you like it, but it's a, it's road to burnout is what that is. And right. it's also, um, dangerous. It's unhealthy and it's not good for you at all. Uh, and people normalize that in the cosplay world and I wish they wouldn't. Yeah, I agree. I've been out of it for so long. I feel like it's a totally different landscape now. It's in that like, <laughs> when I, like when I was in it, it, you know, the cabbage is on the door. Uh, it, like heroes of cosplay was like the biggest thing at the time. I was like, okay, all right, cool, cool, cool. And now it's, I don't know if it's because the landscape is different where now it's a career, like a real viable career where money's involved. If you're lucky. Like, yes. Yeah, exactly. And like people are striving towards that. That's why trends are important to jump onto. And like you get any sort of notoriety if you're the first three, because, Oh, here's this thing that I like. And here, Oh, wow. That's crazy. Not taking into account that this picture showed up three hours ago and there's already professional photos of a costume of it. And I'm like, Oh, yep. the turnaround. <laughs> that, like, how did you have that just lying around? That's um, what I always wonder. <laughs> the, the lady, uh, Dimitrescu uh, outfit mm -hmm. is so simple. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's a it's like a simple classic '40s easy dress with simple fabric, and I genuinely one thousand percent believe that's why they went for that design because oh. um, gaming companies aren't stupid. They know people will right. cosplay it, so if they make something just accessible enough. It, people Good will point. do it. Good and, point. And it's free marketing. You just gave them free marketing. So like that's why like sometimes like if I cosplay something on my own terms, I don't necessarily always want to tag the company because uh they they could have hired me, you know. Like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um I'm not I'm not trying to give you uh free stuff all the time. Like sure. Um the yeah, that one was very simple to do, and the daughters are simple ish to do as well like the mom is just a white dress with some gathered fabric in the front and it's very easy to sew and it was just a big black hat and a pearl necklace red lipstick black hair that's just kind of like curled up but not not in a way that you could deeply tell what the style was so it was very accessible to all types of skill sets um, right and and it was just that's what, it was the perfect formula. I could see that. I could see that. What's been like the quickest turnaround you've had? Um, in the last couple of years, mm -hmm. probably the Resident Evil one. Yeah. Um, it, cause it's just so simple. It was right. easy. Uh, but now I've just been like, now I, I can do this whole other thing that I've been into, which is redoing a lot of my older stuff mm -hmm. um, and taking my time and getting the details better. And, and I've reshot some different versions of my older stuff, sure. which has been fun while simultaneously making newer things. The only thing that I've found is that like, I got a little bit burnt out on cosplay and I still am. And I don't hesitate saying that because sure. I was, I have like 84 costumes in a storage unit. Oh, it's ridiculous. My God. And I don't want to get rid of any of them because like they have all sentimental value behind them. Sure. And it's like, I never know when I'm going to need this. Like, I don't know. And so that's kind of why I don't do that. But I have, I made my four different seasons of Poison Ivy and I really, right. it. and I, I thought that, wow, this is like a new take that I don't commonly see. Um, I have seen a couple, uh, but it was after I had done it. Like, I'm not saying they're copying me. I'm saying I didn't look around. And then when I typed mine in uh, and put them on the internet, I saw other people had done it before. So like, I'm not saying I'm the first. I'm saying I didn't realize. Right. Uh, anyway. <laughs> I'm, I'm with you. Same with the cabbage yeah. guy. <laughs> yeah. So I, I was like, oh, that's cool. So like now, right now I'm currently working on Elsa from Frozen, but as if she was in the Dark Souls universe. Oh, cool. So it's basically like a dark, evil version of Elsa. And if anybody's familiar with um, Bloodborne, 
or uh, Dark Souls, they have a character named the Firekeeper and she has a mask across her face and she's got platinum blonde hair and this really like long billowy dress. But basically I'm just cosplaying her as Elsa essentially. And so it's just this really gothic-y looking uh, like Slytherin kind of look um, for Elsa. And I'm really excited about that. Uh, and so maybe I'm just going to start doing like weird twists on characters just because it kind of just people generally gravitate towards it because it still allows me to have creativity, but yet a common ground with people who can identify a character because some people need that. Right, right. At least like a starting point. That makes yeah. sense. That makes sense. I remember you talking one time about how like you wanted to make bigger armor builds or big helmets and stuff, but you ran into the issue of people wanting to see your face. Um, uh, is that still a yeah, thing? Yeah, I, 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 I've not made a big armor build because I have so many conflicting reasons on it. Mm -hmm. um, and that is definitely one of the biggest reasons still to this day. Sure. Uh, like Spider Gwen got big from Enter the Spider-Verse. Right. And she always wears that mask. And every time someone puts the mask on, like no one cares. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> it's just kind of, it's just kind of silly that way. But it's the reverse Batman. You, exactly. One of the things with making armor is you have to make sure that you actually want to do it for you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Good because point. you'll never get your money back on that armor build. Yeah. By selling, like, I, and my example is like, if you sell prints of pictures of you with your armor on and you are doing this as your career and you're not doing this because it's a hobby, like if this is your career option mm -hmm. um, and you sell purely your armored picture prints, you, you will least likely make your money back that you put into that build via print sales. Sure. So if you would like to, I guarantee if you dress that armor down and did a boudoir version, you would make what you paid for it and then some. Right. So which, is why, demand. which is why you commonly see girls not doing that. <laughs> uh -huh. Makes sense. Is yeah. that a, is that a line that you have to walk a lot? Like when you yep. to be creative, but also make money at it? Yeah, I basically, um, if you've ever watched Hot Ones or- Yes, of course. It's wonderful. He's great. He a good job with great. interviewing people. But the, the episode with John Mayer uh, yes. was one of my favorites because it just like hit me in the soul a little bit. Sure. John Mayer said that he made the song Your Body is a Wonderland because he was making fun of pop chart music. Mm -hmm. And he thought it was just like really pandery and stupid and silly and kind of just like not that good musically. And then he said that when it got to top billboard charts that he was just like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, then he said that every time he would do a concert, people would demand that song and he like hated playing it. So what he decided to do was he was like, everybody uh, gets, you get, they get your body as a wonderland. And then I'll immediately transition into three really musically technical uh, songs that I'm going to play that are going to be like, people are just going to tolerate it. And then I'm going to slip into uh another stupid billboardy pandery song <laughs> and so like that's kind of how that is for me where i'm like okay to like well i can't do what john mayer does uh because i'm not that giant of a person <laughs> but like i will do all right here's my red dead redemption outfit that's not pandering yes. it's not sexy it's just cool and i love it and you get to so just, just you love it and then okay fine i'm so sorry here's bikini pictures for the rest of the week gotcha gotcha that makes sense <laughs> That makes you sense. have to balance it. And I, you know, you will take an analytical hit if you post the cowboy picture that you really wanted to post. Sure. Is and that, then, is that weird for you? Like, cause you want to be creative or it's like, that's just the name of the game. It used to be weird for me. And then I got used to the name of the game. And then now gotcha. I'm like, I don't care. But now it's even funnier because now I know the name of the game. Right. I'm not going to, I'm not going gonna to pretend I don't know it. So like now I get on my, TikTok and whatever. And I'm like, I'm in a bikini and I'm bobbing around and I'm listening to Megan the Stallion where she's like, I'm a hot girl. I do yeah. hot shit. And then I was like, cool, I'm hot. And then the next clip, I'm like, here's my chins. Yeah. And then I like go back up to like, you know, oh, I'm doing hot girl because I have to. Ooh. Right. And I'm like, I'm back to it. But like, that's the attitude I have about it. So it kind of breaks that fourth wall. 
Sure. So it allows me to like have flexibility with whatever I want to do. It's sure. not weird if you're looking at it. It's not weird if you're not looking at it. And it's not weird if I'm going my artistic route. So I'm going to go in different intersections and I'm not going to try to be a one note kind of person. Sure. That makes total sense. And I imagine that's probably the only way you can survive. Because <laughs> if you're only doing the one or the other, you're going to get burnt out regardless. But if you're able to make a living and give the supply to the demand, but also be creatively fulfilled, that's the that's yeah. the balance you want to have. Um, in the last five years since we last talked, like I was primarily just doing cosplay stuff. Yeah. But now it's kind of weird because as we were talking about, like doing different types of, um, you know, uh, methods of going about making content, mm -hmm. it allowed me to become less of just a cosplayer and more of a personality. Yeah. Um, and I started getting booked for stuff where people were like, Oh, hi, we'd like you to do this thing. And I was like, okay, do you want me to make an outfit? And they're like, what? No, <laughs> what? Dude. No. And so I got booked for a couple of things pre pandemic that the pandemic screwed up where they were like, no, we're just, we just want you for, you want you, we want you as a personality. Like we don't, we're, they were going to provide wardrobe. Like they weren't going to have me do it. Like I was kind of impressed. Hell yeah. Um, and I think Twitch? Uh, it's from Twitch and St. Jude and some other stuff. Yeah. I, I signed an NDA on a couple of things, so I can't sure, really talk course. about it, but I it was, it was just kind of wild that they were like, Hey, um, we want you to take these dance classes to learn how to dance to the specific game that's coming out. Oh, <laughs> and then I was like, do you want me to wear an outfit? And they're like, nah, we, we do wardrobe already. You don't have to do anything. We're just hiring you. Cause we think you're freaking funny and we like your attitude and i was like oh my god that's wild wow. i thought you wanted my cosplay work like you know and they're like no um and then <laughs> i got and then i got roped into three esports tournaments <laughs> what <laughs> i'm not an esports person I, I guess i'm an esports you are now <laughs> uh, player now so like i i devolver reached out to me to be in two of their fall guys events and then twitch had me do a fall guys event specifically for an esports competition so i i think i'm a professional at this i think i know yeah. how to do it yeah i think I'm, on paper you can't deny it anymore <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm denying my ability to do esports but yep. yeah it was kind of wild i kept telling uh my friends that i'm doing an esports tournament i can't hang out and they're like what like, yeah i do, <laughs> I do e sports now apparently that's right. You grab your gunner glasses. You're like, see you in three days. Yo, I'm a gunner <laughs> affiliate. What is this? I'm it's telling great. you, you're killing it. You're it's killing weird. it. I'm trying to fight off the gamer TM experience, but they yeah. just keep sucking <laughs> me back in. <laughs> it's a part of you now, Rockwood. <laughs> I am a gamer. <laughs> I mean, I always have been though, but like not That's like, true. Not like to that degree, you know? <laughs> right, right. That, how has Twitch been? Because you weren't, to oh. my, to my, horrible memory you weren't doing it yet last time you we were here twitch has been um, uh twitch has been as fun as it is bad sounds about right um sounds about right it's usually how it works if you had asked me two years ago i would have been ecstatic and happy and been like twitch is the best goddamn thing that's ever happened to me sure but twitch has been base sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just work here essentially. Like I have right. met the coolest people of my life and I've met the worst people of my life. Sure. Um, only highs and only lows, no middle grounds. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, any sort of like arena you step into, I feel like that's how it goes. I've heard the same for YouTube. Yeah. I've, I've heard YouTube is like that, but worse. Yeah. Uh, I've, I've, I know a couple of people who are YouTube partners and mm -hmm. they have expressed that like YouTube doesn't give you anything. If you are a partner, like they don't give you any perks, like nothing cool. They, their, their tech support is like non-existent. There's like mm -hmm. no help. Like I have a partner manager on Twitch. I have somebody reaching out to me for gigs. Um, cool. I have a direct line to Twitch. If I have a question. And I have my partner manager will let me know if he's out of office for the weekend or the week. And if I need any help, direct it to this other form of contact. So YouTube doesn't have that. 
Um, and now if, if anyone listening is thinking that this is the standard, Twitch doesn't usually dish out partner managers to everybody, which mm-hmm. used to be the way it was, but it's not. So not everybody has one. Um, right. And that was a, that was a recent thing, but, uh, I do have a direct form of communication. Um, that doesn't mean that they're really listening though, but yeah. there's somebody there. <laughs> it's nice to know there's somebody in a chair somewhere. <laughs> yeah. There's just this like huge me too movement and it's like this Twitch didn't really budge for anybody and help right. anybody out. They didn't really do anything for victims. They didn't do anything to protect anybody. Mm-hmm. And then Twitch had a really bad PR thing where they said that they put the, what the hell was it? They put the gay and gamer or something. What the hell was it? It was weird. Uh, That's not that. Don't do that. Twitch said the G and LGBT plus also stands for gamer. Ooh. And oh boy, everyone was like, uh, no. <laughs> Pretty sure it means gay. <laughs> and then um, they just they just did like they just missed their mark for PR a lot of time and then they had this whole thing with uh they got rid of the word virgin simp um and some other other like derogatory terms for men Uh uh-huh and then they protected no trans uh people no 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 protecting of women like they didn't ban the word slut or thought they just were like you're not allowed to call somebody a virgin (laughs) <laughs> right <laughs> and it was like why is that so it's like okay so like it used to be a running joke in my stream to destigmatize like because i do sexier content it's to destigmatize mm-hmm. my streams sure um by seeing that everybody in the chat's a virgin and the best way possible would be like we're all virgins here like we don't talk about that right but then now it was great it was it's not great but it is great at the same time um <laughs> when we were streaming the day that it became fully like illegal to say that virgin on stream i was like all right guys twitch went that went without your consent and removed your ability to be called a virgin so all of us fuck now every single one of us in here we fuck and like everybody's like we fuck now i'm like yeah we all fuck and like that's our thing um so we all we all fuck but like which was just like the worst thing to be called right virgin <laughs> What a weird hill to die on. Yes. I'm just not, not particularly happy with that. Oh my God. Does so, it does it seem like Twitch is the new like place to be and lay a like claim somewhere? Like to build a place out? Um from, yeah, the, outside, yeah. from the outside, it kind of feels like that. Like that's the new like being a YouTuber is so like upper echelon now in a lot of ways that Twitch is still a place where you can start from the bottom and grow up. You can, I think TikTok is probably a better spot. Ah, uh, right, right, right. Uh, their algorithm is very good. Yeah, it is. Don't understand how it works. It's too good. It's, it's, it's uncomfortably stupid. good. Um, <laughs> it's really dumb how good it is. Uh, <laughs> Why Twitch, am I seeing this? Because I liked, oh no, I did this. <laughs> Twitch's discoverability sense was way stronger uh, three, four years ago. It's gotcha. still not as bad, but it's starting to get a little bit trickier. Mm-hmm. Um, and also, like, during the pandemic, viewership was at an all-time high. I mean, no shit. Like, <laughs> it makes sense. Everyone's home. And then now it's starting to, like, ebb and flow really weirdly because people are starting to get vaccinated and they're starting to leave their house. And they're now, they're, a lot of people, which is a good thing, are like, I want to get off my phone. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to look at it. And so like viewership's gone down for a lot of people, but not like, it, it's, it's not the same as it was four or five years ago with discoverability. Gotcha. Gotcha. Do you find that like, is it more in your experience from Twitch? Is it the person or is it the type of content that they're doing? Like if you're crafting versus gaming versus hanging out, do you get the same level of interaction? Or do you have to cater there as well? Um, oh, another thing too is something to take into consideration is the fact this DMCA situation happened on Twitch mm-hmm. where now like people can't listen to any kind of music they want. Oh, um, right. They have to listen to free use music. And the reason why I bring that up is because you're saying like 
is it a different crowd from crafting and making versus mm -hmm. like gaming or like anything else? The answer is yes. Um, and I noticed that it strongly depends on what music is on for crafting and making because Interesting. I can't stand listening to EDM music when I'm crafting. And then I can't stand listening to any of the other genres that are offered for free use music, except for lo-fi. And then everybody in my stream stops chatting as much because they're like really relaxed. <laughs> and it's like, ah, oh, like I want to have a conversation, but everybody's like, I'm falling asleep. And I was like, God damn it. Sure. So then like now it's been like, all right, well, crafting and making has been really difficult. Um, so I've been straying away from that a little bit while the DMCA situation has been going on. And then if I'm, if I'm making, uh, you know, if I'm like playing a video game or something, mm -hmm. um, you'll get different types of people depending on what game you're in. Uh, like Final Fantasies, I played Final Fantasy uh, 7 Remake. I had people screaming at me that I've never seen in my chat before coming in because they just want a backseat. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you're playing like Last of Us Part 2, I had people who I've never seen come in and try to be, you know, like homophobic. <laughs> like, oh God. It was just like, you get a mixed bag depending on what game. There's a community for everybody, but mm -hmm. there is always a different vibe if you're a variety broadcaster and that's the danger of it. There's people who play the same game forever for their whole entire stream career. And I think they'd be able to tell you accurately what would happen if uh, they stopped streaming that game. But mm -hmm. like for me, it's it's never the same thing every day. Gotcha, gotcha. That makes sense. It's it's a fascinating community that I've noticed because I'm I don't really do Twitch streaming. I've done it like three times, and I was like, uh, I can't multitask. You'll so, get better at like, it as you go. Do you like you yeah. can do chat and also play? I'm I I can multitask really well. So you know that oh, you know boy. that like little app people were obsessed with Speech Jammer. Sure. So, <laughs> do you know, do you know how it works? <laughs> I don't even know what it is. So. <laughs> You should try it. Uh, okay. You should try it sometimes. So Speech Jammer is you Speech put your jammer. headphones on and um, you can set a delay. So as you're talking, it'll echo your audio after what you just said back into your ear. Oh, and it'll God. it'll force you to, it'll jam up your speech. Like as you're talking, you will start freezing and pausing and trying to formulate your sentence because Ugh. it'll overload. It'll jam your brain up. Um Oh, God. And I've done speech jammer after streaming before for five years. Uh -huh. And I'm able to continue talking as if I'm not bothered because, wow. because of how I've had to manage how to do multitasking with so many different circumstances during stream. Oh, that sounds like a rare form of torture. It, it is. <laughs> um, it, 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 it wasn't. It no. is. So I had this really bad mixer for a while that wouldn't play my audio back in the monitor very well. And it would echo it back into my ear uh -huh. as well. So like I had to learn how to play video games while looking at chat while reading so, like oh, events gosh. of people resubbing and all this kind of stuff while simultaneously like keeping, you know, my discord monitored all at once and then trying to make it look easy. And it's, you become like, you just sit there with the chaos and you're totally cool with it after a while. But you become desensitized. Yeah, it, it's, yeah, it's very stressful. Um, it it's sounds got, it. It's gotten better. Like you kind of have to like light yourself on fire before you can be cool with it. Like, yeah, I didn't know how to use OBS, which is the broadcasting software that I personally enjoy using. Uh -huh. I didn't know how to do it. So there were a couple streams where I was playing Witcher 3 and I didn't have computer audio. So somebody was watching me watch a cut scene and on their on their end, they didn't have any dialogue from the game. Oh, <laughs> so I'm watching a cut scene with Geralt in it. And like, I'm like, not in my head. Yep. Cause I can tell what everybody's saying and everybody in chat's not even telling me that it's radio silent on their end. <laughs> like, Are you fucking serious? <laughs> <laughs> what, what is, what is your setup? What do you have as far as Mike's equipment? What do you play on? Um, I, play primarily on computer now okay. uh, I, to, I do console stuff every once in a while um because i have the elgato capture card which broadcasts nice. my my uh console stuff onto my computer so i can capture it um cool. but i usually use my pc uh we've leveled up super hard on my streams now we have the cool. 
the Elgato key lights, which is really cool. I'll tell you that in a second, but it all syncs up to my stream deck, which is just like this giant soundboard um, oh. that has 32 keys on it. Huh. And I can just, I can hit a button and then my lights will turn on and which is pretty dope. And then I, now I have a Sony, a 6,400, like a nice. couple thousand dollar camera that films my face at 1080 HD uh, when I stream. So it's pretty cool. And I got a high quality uh, peripherals and I have a go XLR that has a soundboard on it. I can do that. And it's pretty cool. Um, and I can also like modify my voice as well. Oh. With it, I don't know if it'll work with, uh, can you hear Whoa. me? Yes. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I can like fuck around with it. It's pretty what? Cool. Yeah. That's wild. <laughs> All of my streams would be this one. <laughs> just like, just really, uh, really. <laughs> Um, That's it's wild. pretty, it's pretty fun. I, I like to use that when I am, um, doing like a, a game where you have to read different characters dialogue, like a JRPG. Oh, kind sweet. Of vibe. Sure. So it's like, I have to play one character and then I can just quickly hit a button <laughs> and then I can just go back to this other character. And it's kind of pretty funny. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. I would, if I had that power, I would never get anything done. It's awful. All of my streams would be like, <laughs> I'm going to read the ingredients of this energy drink. <laughs> oh man. Well, we were, it, it's just really funny. Cause whenever like we get like a troll in there, I'll like mock them and I'll just hit this button <laughs> and I'll pretend to be them. <laughs> and That's then wild. Done some like bring me Han Solo screams and stuff, like all that crap. <laughs> of course. Of course. How, how do you decide how long to stream for? Because most people that I see that are regular Twitch streamers have like schedules. I hate that. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I don't do. Um, I have, I have a, I have a, uh, a schedule, but I, it's not my spinal cord. If that makes sense. Um, okay. Reason why is when I boxed myself in, I started getting, and that's just, the, this is the way I work. When I boxed myself in, I started getting a lot of anxiety and stress. I bet. So it actually made me like it, if I would stream from six to midnight, and those are usually the times I like to go for. Um, mm -hmm. I'm checking the time the entire time. I'm like, oh, I gotta go. Oh my God, I have a couple more hours of this. I gotta go. Instead, right. I end when it feels right. Um, I end Smart. when I want to end and I start anywhere from six to like, seven or eight um just because mm -hmm. like i have the kind of personality that if i know after a couple of years if i keep making myself do something at six o'clock at night i start thinking well if i leave my house at 4 30 i still have to get back at six and i don't think i can do it and then i'll just freeze and i won't do anything for the rest of the day right and that's just kind of how i work uh and that's kind of how my anxiety manifests. So sure. I just had to be like, I'll start it anywhere around these times and I'll end whenever I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the best way to go. It's, yeah. it, it almost sounds like Twitch is the, one of the last bastions for like full on creative controlled creativity. Like you just do whatever you want. To an extent there's DMCAs now. Of course. Of course. Back when we didn't have to worry about that. Yeah. <laughs> we had so much fun. Yeah. And now it's just, it's really crushing a lot of people, not just me. Like my friend, uh, little Sia, Avery, she's, she was a just dance streamer and she's sitting oh, on no. two copyright strikes. If she gets one more, she loses her channel. And there are some other factors going into it, but the main one was DMCA. So if she's playing just dance, she's That's getting her, she's yeah. getting her shit taken down and she streams in front of thousands of people a day. Yee, and so sucks. now like she's, she's probably going to have to take a little bit of a hit because she has to rebrand so hard. She went back to just doing variety games. Right. And people pivot. would get in there and be like, when are you dancing again? And it's like, <laughs> she can't. can't. <laughs> so like, I, I really hope that there's going to be a proper workaround because I, I personally don't believe that this situation with DMCA stuff is helping musicians 
And it's right. not their decision. It's the label's decision to do that. And Always. I don't know, like whenever I was streaming on creative, like I was introducing people to so many different musicians, so many um, different types of genres of songs. And so I was teaching my chat the difference between, you know, glamour country and Americana country. Oh, and yes. Like, oh, there's a huge difference. And like it just some of my some of my crafting streams would just we would get off topic about music genres and and it was interesting. And like we made playlists together. We made collaborative Spotify playlists while we're alive. And on Sundays, I would have song request Sundays. So people could just type in what song they wanted to play. And my bot would automatically play it for them. And it's just like, we can't do that anymore. We can't have fun here. Right. What a weird, again, another weird hill to die on. It's yeah. It, and it has affected a lot. And then there's, there's just something about, there's something about Twitch saying DMCA awareness. And then mm -hmm. they take a DJ that's sampling songs from other stuff and they put them on front page. Oh yeah. That doesn't add do up. That. It's so weird. Cause that's the same thing. Just in it, bite size. Yeah. People were getting like, I'm not even talking about like music playing on your stream. Like Brian, I'm talking about like, yeah. Devin, lady Devin, another streamer friend of mine mm -hmm. had, um, had the, you know, adventure time. They have, uh, uh, Jake was doing the bacon pancake song. Yes. And he, yeah. And they sampled it with Alicia Keys's song, New York. Yes. It's um, great. It only played for a millisecond, but the, the alert would go off so often because she'd have resubs uh -huh. that she got takedown notices for Alicia Keys. Oh no. So for the, for the alert. Yeah. We, we had to, we had to nuke all of our alerts for all of our channels. If they were sampled. Um, wow. even, even like a, a weird EDM thing. Like there was one, uh, person who had police sirens in their song for their alerts. Mm -hmm. Um, and it wasn't like, it wasn't like a song song. It was just police alerts. Oh no, 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 it wasn't. They were doing role-playing RPG, like RPG, uh, GTA stuff. So like uh -huh. Grand Theft Auto, they were like play playing as a police officer and the police car went off. And they got a DMCA because four other musicians happened to sample the police sirens from GTA five in their music. What? So it's like, well, what is safe? You know, right. That's like such a massive someone, overcorrection. If someone samples somebody chopping down a tree in Minecraft and then you're chopping down a tree in Minecraft, you're going to get yeah. flagged. It's so unsafe right now. It's just really, it, it kind of pisses everybody off and it rightfully so. Well, yeah, especially if it's, I mean, an alert that doesn't, ca that doesn't count. Come yeah, on. <laughs> it, it's, it's bad. And then fighting that is also hard because like, like I said, I do have a direct line of contact as a partner manager. My partner manager is the point person. He's actually not the person that is in charge of the DMCA stuff. So he can just only show me where to go. Right. Wow. Is it like. Would you recommend people getting on to Twitch? And if so, like, what are some things you would warn them about as far as the environment goes? Um, I'd, I'd, I'd basically say exactly what I just told you yeah. uh, about this whole DMCA situation stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, the one thing that I hadn't, haven't said is uh, once you make affiliate, like, don't bother trying for partner because there's the, 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 differences in perks from partner to affiliate are like non-existent like there's no oh. real reason um to try other than competitiveness uh especially with the lack of conventions going on right now sure the only other perk is that partners get this like partner party that we have and we get like we get to go into the partner lounge and it's really like it's not the coolest thing ever. Like sure. <laughs> um, the partner parties are kind of like, you want to like, you want to go there because you can, you get a free drink and you have to stand in line trying to get to it all night. Sure. Um, <laughs> and like, it's, it's just a crowded room playing EDM music and everybody's screaming over each other and their voices <laughs> crack just like mine are right now. And sure. It, it's not, it's not worth, there's not really a difference. Um, if also like, if you are, struggling to meet the requirements to get affiliate 
and you want to get partner, then don't like, I would say don't try because you already are able to monetize your streams. Gotcha. The only difference is that if you don't make over a hundred dollars in sub revenue or bit revenue, you don't get paid until you do like they Twitch holds on to your money until it goes over a hundred dollars. Oh, um, okay. But with partnership, you get whatever you get, but like, it's just, they, I really, as they've started, you know, trying to blur the lines of affiliate and partner, it's starting to get less and less blurry. And now it's like, it's like almost the same thing. Oh, okay. Yeah. I know nothing about any of this stuff. So affiliate is when you can start monetizing things. Yeah. Like, like, uh, to try to be a no bullshit about this. Sure. I mean, a lot of people get really excited to make an affiliate. And Mm -hmm. I mean, I could, I could parfait this entire conversation really quickly with a bunch of compliments and trying to be nice and sweet, but I'm just going to say right now, (laughs) you, (laughs) they're not going to congratulate you because they're not congratulating you specifically with your achievement. They're congratulating you giving them the ability to give them more money. (laughs) Sure. Absolutely. Like all the, all the cool cliches and happiness and peace and love towards you making affiliate. But in reality, congratulations, you can make Jeff Bezos and Amazon more money. Right. That's what that is. <laughs> sure. And that's, that's 100% what that is. But also like, you know, I, I wouldn't, if I, if I, when I got partnered on Twitch, it was before the affiliate program. Okay. And if I could go back, I would just, I would just try to stay at affiliate for a while until I'm pushed into partner and yeah. I wouldn't even look at requirements. I would just be like, Oh, I guess I can apply now. Right. <laughs> just, just do it that way. Like there's no reason to get caught up into it. It's really no different. Is there a downside to being partner? Other than like the fact that it's like held up to a higher regard, like it's a hollow title. It's just like a hollow title, pretty yeah. much. Okay. Um, there's barely any differences. Uh, gotcha. I think that you know, other than the payout period, there's like rumors that I think affiliates are net sixty, and partners are net thirty. But I don't know. I wouldn't say that's accurate because that's how it used to be. So your pay period was every thirty days. And affiliates pay period was rumored to be every 60 days. Gotcha. Um, and then uh, the affiliates bitched enough and then they got they got that to get taken care of. But basically, like, and I don't have any problem with them, you know, bitching about it because frankly, getting paid net 60 feels illegal. Yeah. <laughs> um, because it, that's wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've gotten paid net net 60 and net 80 before. Ooh. That feels weird. Like, how do Jeez. people survive off that? You forget um, you made money after that long. <laughs> yeah. And like, especially when you banked on that that month and you're like, no, it's net 80. I'm like, what is net 80? What the hell is this? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Change. So, so they had, they originally had, and, and I wanna I wanna preface with the fact that I am not I'm not one of those kinds of streamers that hates affiliates and I don't. It's just I I'm I'm coming from this as like oh why is this existing Twitch if you're gonna blur it just make it a just, just right like why differentiate whatever <laughs> <laughs> yeah like it, it kind of just makes Twitch Twitch will make affiliates feel like they're chasing a pipe dream for like only Twitch's benefit but they'll make it they'll paint a picture like it's your benefit like it's not sure um Twitch also used to do these things that would help benefit partners like every September they would do September where People could buy subscriptions at half the price. And then it's they've done like s- promos for like bits, which is another form of currency that you can get to pay a streamer where oh, it costs okay. them, it costs them half the price. And they haven't done that in a while. Mm-hmm. Um, and so they haven't really had our backs for that. <laughs> uh and then there's just like they also had like uh affiliates couldn't have as many emote slots as. Twitch partners could, which like, who cares? Um, (laughs) And then they had like, they finally dipped in by being like, all right, well, affiliates just can't go to the partner lounge and the partner parties, which I know I said that the partner lounge isn't like that great, Mm -hmm. but I mean, I will, it is, it is kind of nice if you are somebody with a following who's just been doing a meet and greet all day 
and then you're like, I'm going to run to the partner lounge and you run there and the general public's not allowed. And it's just a bunch of couches. Sure. Like, it's a place food. to sit. Yeah. Food and snacks. It's quiet. Right. It's a moment for you to get away from everybody. But a lot of people think that there's like dead mouse in there and <laughs> there's, like, there's like shit going on and like it's it's kind of just like low key um right like one one year they had like a starbucks barista there and was like making cappuccinos for everybody for free and i don't know they give you a shirt every year or something <laughs> i don't know it's some people i really like hung up on that and sure i, uh, I, I would like to i would like to desaturate that uh illusion for a bit <laughs> Yeah, I can understand that. It's like uh, when some people get verified on something, you're like, it's good for people that are being impersonated. It's really important. Oh my god! But other than that, you don't like get paid for that. Yeah, and then they had that like <laughs> one thing where they shut all the verified accounts off for yep. like a day. <laughs> that was so good. Um, the internet's yeah, I, weird. I have, I've had people um, sold fake accounts of me on Twitter and made oh, no. money off of it, and I still can't get verified. My God, the internet's so weird. It's <laughs> so weird. What are what are bits? I've heard of bits. I how does this work? What what's going on? Um, it's just another way to give Amazon money. Uh, so okay, perfect. So bits <laughs> bits can go two different ways. So bits originally, and I thought they were really useful. So they used to be, and they probably still are, but I don't hear about people using it this way. Mm -hmm. You could just sit there and farm bits by watching ads on Twitch. So if you oh. just ran a bunch of ads, you would get ad revenue in a, in a type of currency that's known as bits. Okay. So bits sound like you're making way more money than you are, but it's just move the decimal point over once. Right. Um, so like a hundred bits is a dollar. Okay. Uh, 10,000 bits is $10. Got it. Uh, a hundred thousand bits is a hundred dollars. Um, like fifty thousand bits is fifty dollars. Like if, if that makes sense. Sure. It's like and, a penny. Yeah, it's like a penny. Mm -hmm. And so uh people could watch ads and generate like you could watch about an hour of ads, which is 60 seconds, so you get a dollar. Okay. And then you could hold on to that currency that costs you nothing that you didn't pay for, but you just farmed ads and you could just be like, here you go, here's a hundred bits. And you just oh, gave somebody a dollar, or okay. you could, just, or you could just bypass that and go on to Amazon and purchase a bit package and do it that way. But okay. I've had this one viewer who he's crazy <laughs> in a good way. Um, he opened his laptop up for a full month and did nothing but just farm bits from ads. And he ended up giving me a hundred dollars in bits on his, on my birthday. And he was like, I just farmed bits. Here's a hundred dollars. Good man. That is <laughs> like, commitment. Holy... Yes. <laughs> like if people can, people can just do that, uh, if they want to like throw money at their streamer. And then also Twitch prime is the thing where if you have an mm -hmm. Amazon prime account, you can link it up. Um, to your Twitch account because they are owned by the same company. Right. And you can subscribe to any streamer for free and the streamer gets 100% of the profit. Oh, cool. That sub. Uh, Amazon takes a percentage of your sub revenue as well. Right. So you have tier one subs, which is $4.99, tier two, which is $9.99, and tier three, which is $24.99. And as each tier progresses... Amazon takes less of your cut. Oh, okay. Um, which is which is cool as well. But like, Interesting. I think Twitch Prime is the last thing that Twitch has released that has been really, really helpful. And it hasn't, nothing has been as good ever since. And I want to say that was three or four years ago. Ah. Uh, Actually, no, I take that back. Sub gifting where people could just dump money and just gift you subs. Right. That's also a good thing too, but. That Amazon Prime thing is the reason why I think it is why Twitch is still surviving. Okay. Um, Facebook Gaming just put out this new deal where I think until um, 2023, I think if you stream on Facebook Gaming, you can keep 100% of your profits until 2023. Wow. 
uh, they will not take a percentage. <laughs> Zuckerberg is really trying to invest in this. And I was like, <laughs> that's really good, except I don't think it's going to last in the long run because no company has something like Twitch Prime right now. Right. YouTube gaming doesn't have a Twitch Prime. Everyone has Amazon Prime right now. Right. If you could just, you know, like I, a majority of my my own subscribers are Amazon Prime. Like I would lose, I would lose half my income if my Amazon Prime subs left me. Really? Altogether. Like if, yeah, it would, it's huh. a huge amount of money that I make off of Amazon Prime subscriptions. Right. Because it doesn't cost anybody anything. Right, the only thing free. is It doesn't auto renew either. So you have to make a reminder to auto renew every month. But it's still like, if I left that, like there's no other company that does that. Right, right. And it could be another flash in the pan type thing where like it's cool for a little bit and then just goes back to what worked better. Yeah. Yeah. That's wild. It's such an interesting, Twitch is such an interesting environment to look at from the outside. Like my, I like the, I don't know if this is, it's probably been going on forever and I'm just new to it. The whole, like you earn uh, like points by time spent watching and then you can buy things with them. You know what I'm talking about? It's like you can unlock yep. a, a, that. Um, that mm -hmm. What is that? Yeah, whatever that is, I like it. It's pretty cool. I, I think it's fascinating that you can kind of have a little bit of control of the ad revenue and where it goes. Yeah, is that like, how does that work? <laughs> you have to like turn off your ad blocker and then like there's specific ads of that week that people want you to watch like you could just keep watching the charm and bear ad or something you know right right <laughs> i've never farmed ads um me neither i've never done any of that i i tried it and i couldn't figure out how to turn my ad blocker off yeah. one time so i was like yeah, i'm not gonna bother sure i like it and it seems like each person that i've popped into they have like a different version of that where it has like their own emotes or their own things it's like i yep. spend 50 and you got a stretch or something i'm like what a neat what a neat idea. <laughs> <laughs> like, um, this is probably not a new thing, but it's new to me. And I'm like, oh, huh, I like this. I can unlock it. I can unlock a random emote. All right. I'll do that. Twitch is ever changing. Um, and if I leave the platform for a week to go on like a vacation or something and I come back, mm -hmm. I run into so many new things. Yeah. <laughs> um, one time I was streaming, I was. This was before, uh, this was, this was like around my birthday, but this was before this had come out yet. Um, and so I was like, cool. Every like five subs, I'll like, I don't know, like I'll drink water or something. I don't remember what the hell I was doing, but it was, <laughs> it was something. And then everyone laughed at me and I was like, why is it funny? And then I got a notification on screen while I was live saying, this person's gifted 50 subs to your channel. <laughs> and I like froze and I was like, what the fuck? And they're like, I yeah, much water can I drink? We can gift subs now. And I'm like, you can give subs now. And they're like, yeah, you didn't check your partner email. And mine goes to like a different folder. Uh -huh. I didn't see it. I was like, oh my God. Cause like <laughs> we got like 300 sub points that night, but that used to be we used to only like go up like 10 sub points because it was just, you couldn't gift anybody a subscription. You all had to be, you had to manually do it. Each viewer had to manually do it, but then like you could come into my channel and drop $500 on my channel. And then I would suddenly shoot up 1400 sub points or something like that. Like that's the math oh, is off, sure. but like some, it went from just getting five subs to getting like thousands and hundreds and as many as somebody wanted to dump in. Wow. And it's like, holy shit. Uh, and it, it changed the game a lot. Uh, right. And I think the funniest thing was me not reading the email, going live, doing a sub <laughs> thing, and then going, what in the fuck just happened? And then, like, I talked to other streaming friends and they were like, yeah, didn't you didn't hear about that? I was like, no, I just, the first time <laughs> seeing it wasn't happening to me. <laughs> no. You start pulling up gallons of water. Okay. All right. Where's well, the word? <laughs> It was just funny because I just sat there <laughs> and I was like, what is that? And they all started laughing. So then they did it more. And I was like, what is that? What is this? What does this mean? Because like it's Streamlabs, which is the program you use to have the alerts go on. Oh, okay. 
whenever they have a new feature, it's set to a default. So it's got like a generic sound and a generic image. And so it's not anything like tailored to my stream that's been custom made by me. So right. it was just really out of left field to see that alert go off. It's like hearing a new notification go off on your phone. You're like, what the hell is that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was there like, I, I mean, I feel like you're kind of in your groove now. Like you sort of know what you're doing. Was there a, a learning curve when you started doing Twitch and like, what was the hardest thing to pick up? Oh my God. Yeah. The, the, the Witcher three stream when I didn't have desktop audio. Oh yeah. Technical um, software stuffs, man, my, my internet going out all the time, which is something that I still can't avoid if it ever happens. Right. Um, me learning anything about a PC, uh, <laughs> cause I was always doing console gaming. And right. so like me learning about what a CPU is, what a GPU is, what a video card is, like sure. learning any of that. And frankly, I don't know a lot anyway. I know a lot more than I did. Um, me learning how to do OBS, uh, which is my broadcasting software stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, learning how, uh, how to just do any kind of thing, basically. Like I, I didn't know any of it. And then funny enough, like I had to fail in order to learn how to do it. Of course. And it was very frustrating. And there were so many times where like, like I've been on my streams and I've been so frustrated that I've like, I have to apologize a million times. And like, at least I can count two times where I've like almost been in tears, frustrated at something. I bet. Um, all, while live. Sure. Uh, <laughs> well, and, that's why. <laughs> yeah. And then like, and it's not even like computer technology stuff. Like I'm even talking about like my, my monitors being mounted, like this one time we got raided for 1500 people by this random streamer oh. who was huge. And I was like, Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. I'm Danica Rockwood. And the second I said, I'm Danica Rockwood, my left monitor fell off the rack <laughs> and I caught it midair and everyone saw that. And they're like, Hey, and I was like, I don't know how to put this monitor back up. And then all my monitors got unplugged oh, no. and then I could not see the chat. And then all they're doing is they're seeing me with my monitors all fucked. And I was like, Oh my God. So I had to somehow hold one monitor up, grab my phone, open chat and go, what do I do? No one, no one was home. I couldn't read. And everybody's like, you have an Allen wrench. Do you have this? Do you have this? And I was like, I can't get it. If I let go, it's all going to fall down. And I was like, no. I'm so glad there's 1500 people watching this right now. And they all were like, is this normal? And it was, was oh my God, it was just a lot. What an introduction. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. That's unfortunate at the moment, but also kind of amazing. It was incredible. And I can't believe that happened. That see, that's what that is all my streams would be if I ever did that. Yeah. It's just that. Like I, I've recently started uh, I like Instagram because I know Instagram. So I've been live streaming me making dinner and <laughs> I'm terrible at cooking and I always ruin something. And I'm like, all right, let's see what we got here. And it says it's gonna take us 40 minutes. It takes an hour and a half, because of course it does. And it's just oh, man. the worst. Yeah. Have you ever seen that product suddenly salad at the grocery store? No. What is that? Go into the pasta section and then you'll find suddenly salad. Oh no. And it's my roommate in college had this box of suddenly salad and uh, we lived in two different locations together, but she never ate it, but she would always bring it to the next apartment we were moving into. And I was like, <laughs> girl, are you going to eat this? And she's like, yeah, I will. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and then I just started making fun of her for it. And I said, well, how sudden is the salad? Like how sudden is suddenly fair question. And then, uh, I suddenly is not actually as soon as you think it is. <laughs> I'm not even joking. Um, so it takes like 30 minutes to make this salad. What? Uh, sudden at yeah. all. Yeah, I know. Um, but then I got upset and I, I Googled how sudden is sudden. Oh, no. Uh, and then uh, I'm going to, I'm Googling it right now just to, just to show you. Oh man. If it says uh, a long time, I'm going to be very upset. Yeah. It was, it was pretty impressive uh, how it wasn't as soon as I thought. How fast is sudden? Oh man. I think it was. Well, now I'm getting like cardiac arrest. I think it said <laughs> around, I think it said around like 15 to 20 minutes is sudden. What? 
Uh, and I was like, that's not, I've been using it wrong my whole life. Yeah. It, it's, well, I guess sudden isn't instantly or instant. So I quick guess without warning, unexpected. And then somehow I Googled it and, yeah, so then and what's it was, quick? <laughs> and it was like anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes. Like, That's <laughs> wild. And uh, so suddenly salad is, is 20 to 30 minutes as well. So I have a new enemy. It's dumb. It's yeah, so dumb. that's really dumb. If Sudden I was like it, now, yeah, now. It, or maybe it, that's it instantaneously. Happened. I don't know. Yeah, maybe that's why there's different words. But so if somebody says <laughs> uh, it happened suddenly, I'm not like I can watch an entire episode of anime in the meantime. It's like, no, no, no. Part of my laundry. And then, yeah, like, yeah. all right, let's handle this. That's upsetting for some reason. Sudden, what? Uh, you know what? I'm completely derailed now, all mentally. I, I've been using a word wrong my entire life. Stop using suddenly. Yeah. Suddenly, if anything, that's that's some good life advice. Let's yeah. just throw it out. <laughs> but uh, you should try making some suddenly salad. I should. And then I'll really put that sudden to the test. It's sudden like, for me is going to be an like hour. Pasta salad dishes. Those like summer salads, you know, with the, the bow tie pasta. And then uh -huh. you put like... Uh, some dehydrated packets of something, and then you put maybe olive oil on it, and then uh -huh. you put it in the fridge for thirty minutes. So like, boom, sudden. one of those kind of things. I think I'm pretty sure what it seems to look like on the front of the box. That's so weird. That's so weird. So, <laughs> ad advice for everyone in life: uh, sudden, just throw it out. Stop, stop using it. It doesn't mean what you think it means. Suddenly, get rid of it. Suddenly, get rid of it, which gives you plenty of time to get rid of it. Just throw it That's out. That's insane. What? So then <laughs> on a more uh, micro level, what is some advice you would give to somebody who wants to get into like content creation, be it cosplay or streaming or both? Just uh, know why you're getting into it Good and point. make make a note of why you want to do this. Sure. And before that definition gets blurred over time, when you start to feel burnt out and lost and not knowing where your place is in the role of what you're trying to go for. It's smart. That That's would smart. be, that would be my advice. And because then there, there's just so much advice where it's like, as long as you're having fun, that's what matters. It's like, well, no shit. Like with any <laughs> um, <laughs> fun doesn't pay my bills though. <laughs> and like, sometimes I'll be like, I'm not having fun anymore, but I am paying my bills. So Right. I need to find a way to still have fun as well. And then it's like, okay, well, then why'd you get into this? What are you doing right now? Like, just check in with yourself once you start feeling a little bit weird and different. And there's nothing wrong with taking breaks mm -hmm. because uh, you can't you can't fake a, any kind of emotional state without you being 100% okay either. There's a lot of people who are like yeah. toxic positivity and stuff. It's, mm -hmm. it's very easy to tell. Yeah, good point. Oh, I have another one. Ooh. How do you come up with your poses? Oh, well, so that's just like a lot of just regular modeling stuff. Yeah, um, okay. With with modeling, um, po which is why I do a lot of it. Yeah. Uh, for cosplay stuff, because now it's been like my modeling stuff takes more time because we're like thinking out of the box. But for cosplay, once I'm doing a cosplay, like I hardly have to think about my poses. Right. But it, it's so many different factors. Um, it's just basically like what poses look good for my body type. Um, what what uh what kind of um you know emotion am I trying to portray or detail I'm trying to show off in my costume? Um, like the biggest example is Lara Croft. Mm -hmm. Uh I made the I made every single piece of my prop from scratch, even my my gun belt, uh my holster is what I'm trying to say. Um, I made that from scratch, but if I was going to hunker down, I would actually like hide all the detail of my work that I put into it. So it was like, okay, well, let's do a standing pose. So you can clearly see all the stuff I made. Ah, okay. um, or then it's, or then it's just regular modeling where it's like modeling is creating, um, shapes with your body that are pleasing to the eye. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so you're creating horizontal lines with your legs and your arms and you're creating shapes so that makes it easier and that's why you see a lot of high fashion models like posing like really strangely sure um and it's, and that's why they're really long and lanky because they're able to like make shapes but then that's just like regular geometry and art and lining and 
you know, negative space and balancing the light between like the ratio of like where your arms are and stuff. But there's a whole bunch of different factors. It just depends on what I'm doing or what character I'm dressed as. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. I've always wondered that because there is an art to it. Yeah, that, there that is. Makes, that makes sense. So look into modeling and posing and stuff like that. And that will then make your cosplay stuff even better as far as the photos go. Yeah. Aha. I like it. I like it. Well, hey, you survived. We just hit an hour. Wow. Look at you. Five years. That's how long it took. So in another five oh. years, you have to come back and we'll talk about the new things. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we will. This is like the Billie Eilish check in with each other every time. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Every five years. We'll see what the internet looks like then. It kind of makes me really nervous. That made me really nervous. Yeah. <laughs> as soon as the sentence left my mouth, I suddenly I don't, felt it I don't drop know. in my stomach. I don't know how I feel. Maybe we'll become more self-aware. Oh, God. I kind of hope not. Can, yeah. it, can it get worse? Have you seen Bo Burnham's inside? Oh, my uh, God. I have, and it hurts so uh, good. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It's wild. But, hey, you agreed. We did it. We're still friends after all this time. <laughs> oh my God, Brian, I'm always going to be your friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not getting out of this. No. We made that deal at that bar with the guy singing the ding a song. We, this oh, my is God. For yeah. life. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> I'll never forget, Danica. That's such, a, that's such a unique time. Oh, tell me about I remember Dahlia Thomas. All right. I've been around. <laughs> yeah. Oh Listen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not going to explain what that means. So anyone listening, good luck. Neither am I. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, before I let you go, I got to ask, where can people find you online? Where can they find your stuff? What you got? Uh, you guys can find me on uh, anything on uh, Danica Rockwood on uh, on the Google. Um, Danica Rockwood on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, Danica and David on Patreon, where we have exclusive uh, videos and pictures and, uh, posters and other types of stuff. We even have a little mini podcast that David Love and I do together. That's exclusively over there. And then I also have a gum road. If you're not interested in subscribing to anything on Patreon, you can just buy, uh, pictures and sets that have been long retired off of Patreon over there. And I also stream every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday at 6 PM to like midnight or whenever I feel like ending over on twitch.tv forward slash Danica Rockwood. Ooh, you know, if I didn't know any better, I'd say you were busy. Yeah, I'm a little busy. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. And... Hello, friends. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of The Interesting Podcast. If you'd like to follow the show, it's at Pod of Interest on Twitter. If you'd like to follow me, I'm at Jedi Brian on all social media sites. You can also find me at BrianBalance.com. There you'll find all my demos and a bunch of other fun stuff. If you enjoyed this episode, please share it and tell your friends. A good rating or review always helps and is greatly appreciated. Let the people know we've got some cool stuff going on over here. Speaking of cool stuff, we now have merch! Just search The Interesting Podcast on tpublic.com to get you some sweet gear. Also, I've got a Patreon, so if you'd like to support the show more directly, you now have that option over at patreon.com slash jedibrian. On that note, special thanks to Chris, Ben, Jim, Daz, Kelly, Daryl, Xavier, and Victor. Your support means so, so much, and I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. So until next time, be well. <laughs>